Hi, uh, this is Maureen and I'd like to take you through a quick review of animal and fish agriculture and social equity. I work for Care USA as a team leader for the Pathways uh, Women in Agriculture uh, program. So I'll begin with the key issues and trends and make uh, two points around uh, the fact that women, youth, the rural poor have different needs interests and constraints related to livestock and fish technology development and delivery and men and women are custodians of livestock and fish knowledge and skills that are important in strengthening technology development and adoption however we find that the smallholder farmers that we work with uh, face uh, lots of uh, disparities or inequities if you like in various ways um, the first way is um, with regards to livestock and fish uh, resource allocation because we find that the women and rural poor are often marginalized and have minimal control of access uh, to factors of production such as land, ponds, uh, inputs uh, such as seed and fertilizer, credit and uh, technology. Um, similarly, you may find that women may be involved in production but may not uh, may or may not own the means of production such as livestock land and uh, and, and and water uh, the other issue is that a uh, decision making in livestock and fish uh, uh, production uh, varies uh, uh, greatly uh, research has shown that uh, small farm households are not necessarily consensual or cohesive uh, decision making units but a uh, complex interaction of uh, needs, incentives, and interests of both male and female household uh, members. You find that in most systems, women provide labor for the various tasks related to livestock, but may or may not control the process of decision making, especially over the disposal of animal and animal uh, uh, products. We also find that women have different, women and smallholders have different access to technology development and extension. Uh, women are repeatedly refer referenced for their work with small uh, animals, especially in backyard systems and in milk production. Uh, you find that in many countries, women are denied ownership rights for large stock, but allowed to keep a small stock. However, you find that scientists and development workers have tended to concentrate on male oriented activities such as beef um, uh, production and large scale enterprises. Um, the third, the fourth point is that uh, small scale farmers, many of who are women, lack incentives uh, for their labor. For example, a woman who labors on a livestock enterprise may not be the same person who transports the milk to the market and gets paid. Uh, this can affect the success of livestock activities at household level, which often depends on a woman's labor without considering how they are compensated for it within the, house, uh, the household. There is better need to understand the varied relationships within farming households as well as the gender and uh, the gender labor dynamics uh, in, in, involved. Um, uh, one uh, uh, statistic that we may all be aware about is that women compose and not only around 70% of the poor, they also make up the majority of poor livestock keepers. And hence you find that uh, this presentation is going to be based around gender as a social inequity more than any other, um, any other aspect. Um, to make a lasting impact in livestock and fish productivity, uh, this CRP must address the underlying uh, in social inequalities between men and women, which are a product of of a series of interrelated social, economic, and cultural factors. And since it will be difficult in the time and space provided for me to give a full review on who is doing or proposing to do what, I would like to quickly share about CARES Women Empowerment Framework as an approach that challenges the existing underlying norms and institutions. So um, under this framework, CARE defines women's empowerment as the sum total of changes needed for a woman to realize her full human rights. That is the interplay of changes in agency, which uh, constitute her own aspirations and capabilities around skills, confidence, decision-making, confidence and knowledge of rights, as well as um, the structures 
those are the, 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 the environment that surrounds and that, that surrounds and conditions the choices that she has to make. And these have to do with set customs, traditions and norms, laws, policies and institutions, and rules for accessing uh, you know, services such as extension and, and natural uh, resources. Uh, lastly, it um, focuses on the relations, that is the power structures through which she negotiates her path. And this begins right from the household, uh, you know, the spouses and the other men and boys in the household, uh, the market actors who are mostly male, the community leaders who are mostly male as well, and the gatekeepers, or you could call the custodians of the societal, um, you know, uh, norms and, uh, and, and, and traditions. Then uh, the relations also around collective action, as you know, most of the smallholder farmers are organized in, in different uh, groups, as well as agents of change that enable uh, women's um, empowerment. But most significantly, this framework entails challenging uh, norms, as I said, which are considered to be structures and not just building individual skills and capacity, which is where most women in agriculture and many gender and development actually interventions and it recognizes gender as a relational, uh, as relational, and recognizes institutions as uh, as, a, as as structures that are uh, gendered. So, in practical application of this model, the Pathways uh, Women in Agriculture program um, has 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 used this model to create a theory of change with five interrelated uh, change levers, focusing around uh, capacities, um, access productivity and profitability, and ensuring that after you have these three, you have household influence so that the women can get the benefits that are due to them, and an, enab an enabling environment um, that, um, uh, that, that fosters uh, women's empowerment that goes all the way from policies to uh, customs and, and uh, traditions. So, um, of that background, uh, around which issues should life, uh, livestock and fish best uh, position itself. Uh, one, I think, is around the empowering interventions and focusing on actual impact on the ground around women's empowerment uh, based on the structure that I just presented, engaging men and boys. I think uh, you've heard about the he for she uh, movement by the UN that is based around the fact that you cannot, you know, talk about one half of the population of the women without engaging, uh, you know, the other half. And then the other one is around ensuring that collectives and groups are strengthened to ensure that there is, uh, you know, social empowerment. And by this point, somebody might be wondering, and how is that within the mandate of this CRP? I think it's important to engage uh, the necessary partnerships to build the organizational systems and culture to uh, engage relevant uh, partners around gender and women's empowerment, community and social uh, mobilization. Um, another area is to uh, around measuring change to ensure that we have gender sensitive monitoring and uh, evaluation uh, indicators that show the differentiated outcomes and impacts around different segments of the population, men, women, youth, um, you know, the poor and the more uh, well-to-do. Uh, we also need to recognize markets as gendered institutions and as determinants of technology adoption and, uh, and, 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 and uptake. And of course, lastly, to generate influence from research that uh, influences policies in the sector to ensure that outcomes are gender equitable and uh, proper. Uh, thank you for listening to this presentation and I welcome any comments that you might have. Thank you.